Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer for Wednesday the 6th of January. As we start, we remember our wonderful Father in Heaven. In these difficult days, let's say together, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their searching. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So we take well, a, a moment out of our day to be still, to remember that God is God. He is our fortress. He is with us. So maybe imagine putting down any hassles or stresses. And turning your hands up. And asking God to fill you afresh. And speak to you this day. So take a moment to look back at the last 24 hours and give thanks for what has been good. And for all my um, well, reservations, I want to thank you, thank God, that we do have a democratically elected government who, though I might say imperfectly, are striving for the good of this country. Let's give thanks for the scientific leadership that we have, the medical leadership, the vaccine. On a personal level, I just give thanks for friends, for family, for colleagues. Let's pray for God's healing and God's way forward for anything that's made you sad. For those on our hearts this day. For me, for two in particular I know of in hospital. For those in our care homes. For those feeling very cut off and isolated. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for your healing, for your help. Father, we do cry out to you for our country at this time. Lord, Father, we do thank you for the vaccinations and we pray that nothing will hold them up, that they will be effective against all uh, mutations. We pray that they might happen quickly. We pray that the lockdown will work, that cases go down. We pray that the NHS will not be overwhelmed, that you will give the resources they need, enable them to work well together as teams. Lord, just for your blessing upon each one of them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray together.
Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we rejoice that you call us to be your children, to be your disciples, continuing the work Jesus began. We pray particularly for the coming months, for ways of working together as a team, for those who don't have the internet. Lord, as you abide in us, may we abide in you. Father, we pray that you will feed us. So, Father, for the day ahead of us, for all that we're looking forward to, for all that worries us, we offer you all we can and pray for your protection, for your provision, for your blessing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light upon our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all people in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I think it's just a wonderful reading. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. And he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He didn't realise where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. And for me, it's just the kind of reading I was delighted came up um, for today. Um, I mean, I love the story. I love the way it starts. Um, three days into Jesus's ministry, he's at a party. I just think sometimes we take ourselves so seriously, um, ministry so seriously, that we forget the power of parties combined with prayer. Uh, and I love it. I also love the kind of confusing um, uh, parts where uh, Jesus, uh, Mary says to Jesus, they've no more wine. And Jesus replied, why do you involve me? It sounds like Jesus is being helpful. Mary's response of just do whatever he tells you, I think just shows that Jesus was teasing Mary in a kind of um, slightly mischievous way, if you like. I just think we're not quite sure, but it shows Jesus's sense of humour. And sometimes I just think we need that sense of humour. And maybe that changes our whole perspective on life. The result for that wedding couple is they got the most wonderful but anonymous gift. Jesus at that point didn't want to show off. It would have drawn completely the wrong sort of attention. So he did it quiet 
quietly. But it's just lovely, exuberant, joyful giving. Jesus loves a party. He likes it when we have life and have it to the full. We need to rejoice in that. It also speaks to me of, I suppose, my own journey being a vicar and a rector and how so often I felt that I've run out of wine, don't know what to do next, I'm stuck, I'm fed up, I'm dry. So often it's in the times of desperation that our prayers go deepest and I've seen the most wonderful answers. Wine that's better than my kind of own attempts at ministry. To pray for more of that for me and for us all. But with it as well, I sometimes glimpse God's sense of humour. I can be so worried about individual things when God just has a smile on his face, knowing how he can sort things out. It's so good just to look back and see God's answers to prayers and have confidence for the future. So, Father, I do pray for the church today, which in so many ways looks to have run out of wine. Father, I, I pray that we will respond by turning to you in prayer. I pray that we will respond by working at what you call us to do, even if it seems pointless, like pouring water into stone jars. And I pray that we will be delighted. We, we, we will be surprised. We will have life and have it to the full. Amen. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways. We clothe us in our rightful mind. In purer lives thy service find. In deeper reverence praise. Drop thy still dews of quietness till all our strivings cease. Take from our souls the strain and stress and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of thy peace. Christ, light of the world, scatter our darkness. Let your healing spring up with the dawn. In the darkness around us, let us as your church be a still place of light, a still place of love, a still place of peace, a still place of your presence. From here, Lord, from this place, through us, may your light flow, may your love radiate, may your peace reach out, may your presence be known. Make us, Lord, a sure place of your light, a sure place of your love, a sure place of your presence. Through us, let your light shine, let your love enfold, let your peace fill, let your presence be known. We pray with confidence. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. No more we doubt thee, glorious Prince of life. Life is naught without thee. Aid us in our strife. Make us more than conquerors through thy deathless love. Bring us safe through Jordan to thy home above. Thine is the glory, risen conquering son. Endless is the victory thou O death hast won. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God, 
of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Thank you for praying with me and bye-bye.